In our contemporary context, most people consider humility as a virtue. Uh, humble people are praised and well-regarded. Um, we gravitate toward them. But that was not always the case, and perhaps uh, even today there are still people who do think of humility as, in fact, a vice. Um, but philosophers such as Aristotle thought humility was a form of weakness um, that prevented you from becoming great. Nietzsche thought that humility was a form of resentment that just was playing to your weaknesses. And David Hume uh, uh, is known for calling humility a monkish virtue, um, something that is not to be desired. Um, that all raises the question of, if, what is it? What is humility? How do we define it? And in particular, how do we define an intellectual humility? So when you guys begin your research, what definitions do you start with? Yeah. Well, I've, I've been privileged to, to uh, be part of the Center for Christian Thought at Biola. University, and I was uh, in a, what's called an internal fellow, uh, which means I'm on the faculty at Biola, but I was invited uh, this past fall to be part of the, uh, the group that gets together. And a lot of my thoughts on humility were, were uh, greatly influenced by that semester. And one, one of the things that I became more aware of, I, I was somewhat aware of this, but I became even more appreciative of it, was just how careful some of the contemporary thinking has been uh, on humility uh, among philosophers and among theologians as well. Uh, so it seems like there's certain um, dimensions, if you will, or if you want to, actually the, the, the philosophers themselves would say, no, we've got to get at the core of what this means. And I see as, as psychologists, we're a little bit more, maybe I should say, functional about it. How does this operate uh, in, in, uh, in our lives? But they're really trying to get at the core. And a couple of things that came out, one perspective says, well, it's a, it's a uh, low concern for status for example. So I'm not always thinking about, am I going to get this award? Uh, I'm not always thinking about, as a teacher, am I going to get the best teacher evaluations for my students? Uh, and if I think that maybe I should do something that maybe even students would think is unpopular, uh, but I think that it's good for them to, to have that experience, uh, I might be willing to do that without a regard for getting good teacher ratings, for example. Mm. So that's one view, uh, and I think a, a, a pretty convincing view in many, in many ways. Another is you just simply own limitations, uh, mm -hmm. that you recognize the limits of your own um, uh, views, of your own perspective in the case of intellectual humility. Uh, another uh, perspective is that it, it really is a being with, and sometimes that's being with those who are less privileged, less fortunate. And you can look at uh, the, the Philippians passage of Christ humbling himself uh, by, by coming and, and being with us and in, in human form, emptying uh, himself. Self -emptying, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Right, so I think all of these, there's, there's many others, but those are three that I, I think stand out that I've learned from philosophers. Now, I don't know if we can empirically get at all of those in the, in, with all of the nuances that philosophers want us to do, but, uh, but I think it's, it's really helped me uh, zero in a little bit more on the depth and richness of, of the concept. Hmm.